Welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig out of Starshot Studio in Times Square, where we tell you about the people that you need to know about. Rebecca Lombardo has been through the dark side and back and is here to tell us all about it. She is a psychological influencer. She is the author of this book, It Is Not Your Journey. And she's going to tell us all about her road to recovery and making a difference in other people's lives. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having it me. is really thrilling. You came from where? Tell everybody where you came from we, and how long your drive was. We drove about 12 hours from Michigan. There was a lot of delays along yeah. the way. So last night, so we're, we're both, husband and I are both a little bit Yes, sleepy. yes. And you were really <laughs> committed to drive 10 hours, 12 hours mm -hmm. to tell your story. Absolutely. Um, and I found you by mm -hmm. researching on the internet. I was looking for psychological influencers. So I found you and we connected yes. and it turns out you were familiar with what I do and it was the perfect synergy. <laughs> and I'm really impressed because, you know, not everybody wants to talk about the diagnosis that they right. have, their hospitalizations mm -hmm. that they have, what made you decide to go public with your bipolar disorder illness, with attempting suicide, mm -hmm. being hospitalized involuntarily? Right. What made you tell that story? Well, originally when I started to tell the story, it was just for me, just mm -hmm. to kind of um, purge my brain of all the, the negativity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my husband read it and said, wow, you know, this is, this is really good. And a long time ago, I'd wanted to be a writer. So uh, I started to show it to friends, and then they would show it to friends, and then it got popular, and then I made it public. And out of nowhere, I was hearing from people from all over the world. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you told your story. It's, yeah. you know, it's just like mine. So um, it just kind of exploded into something that, you know, I wasn't anticipating, but I, I'm really grateful for now because I know for a fact that I've helped people and I'm really proud of that. It's um, so important. And what we're talking about here is Rebecca's It's Not Your Journey. And this is a book that's available on her website, which we will share uh, when we promote the show so that everybody can get a copy because now the second edition, mm -hmm. they can get it on Amazon, right? Yep, absolutely. And what I love is you tell the story how this was originally a blog mm -hmm. and the writing was part of your healing right. process. And just this desire to make it into a book was not something that was necessarily easy exactly. for you to get done. It took a lot of mm -hmm. work and hard out. How did you finally turn this into a book? Well, I, I went through a couple of people uh, that, you know, claimed to be publishers and weren't. <laughs> um, and I still kept looking. You know, I was I was sending queries out to different places, and I would get off and get back. Oh no, we don't publish those kind of books, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And then finally, I found someone who was interested in it, but he was very very new, mm -hmm. uh, didn't have a lot of experience. But so we sort of decided to try each other out, basically, <laughs> and uh, that's how it first got published. The second edition, my husband and I published ourselves. And it's so, it's so wonderful, and you're so responsible, too, because you talk about, and we'll get into this, at one point, you experienced a lot of loss. Mm -hmm. You lost your mother to lung cancer. You mm -hmm. lost your brother uh, not too far apart, and that sent you into a suicidal depression. Mm -hmm. And you highlight, very responsibly so, that this is your journey. Right. This is not, you're not recommending that people follow in exactly. your footsteps, that you just want to share. And it's so important because there's so much shame surrounding mental illness. I, I did a story, and it was a national story about the Pope 
talking about in his biography, and it was kind of interesting how he went to a Jewish psychoanalyst, of course, <laughs> and how he found it really helpful. And I was asked why that story was so important, you know, this pope, a man of God, why would he need to go to therapy? And the truth is, we have so much stigma surrounding right. it, and it's so unfortunate. Why do you think that is, and what do you think we can do to eliminate that stigma just a little bit? Well, I think we're really working towards it. I mean, especially the uh, mental health community on Twitter, uh, social media in general is extremely active mm -hmm. towards ending the stigma. Um, but what I think the problem is, is that people are often most afraid of what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know, they can understand a broken arm, they can't understand a broken brain. So they, they're afraid of it and they, they don't know, they've been given all of these strange, you know, Hollywood is often the, the serial killer happens to be bipolar. Yeah. And, you know, they've been given all these, you know, strange descriptions of what mental illness is. Right. So um, this is what their point of reference is. So like I said, I think it's really just a matter of fear. And yeah. they just need to have it explained to them I, I agree. I, I guess we're lucky in New York City that having a therapist is a little bit like having a personal trainer. <laughs> it doesn't feel as shameful. It feels more commonplace because so many people do it and feel comfortable doing it. But that isn't, you know, we're not quite there yet. And what I often tell people, until we can say we're going to a therapist for bipolar disorder or depression or anxiety or whatever the case may be, like we're going to the dentist, right? then we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the issue is when it comes to our emotions, there's a lot of responsibility that we should be able to fix it ourselves. Right that you know it's you can't fix your cavity you have to go to somebody to fill it mm -hmm. but when it comes to your emotions we feel like oh we should be able to fix it ourselves and that's just so not the case there's so much there's a lot of misconception when it comes to emotions and we all feel we should be happy all the time which is not the case when it came to your attempting suicide take us back to that time and what it was like for you and you talk about being involuntarily committed, which mm -hmm. means that you didn't have a choice to go in the hospital right. or check yourself out. Somebody said, you're going in right. and you're staying there until we think you're well. Yes, so the state of Michigan. Take, take us back to what happened. Well, I had been experiencing a lot of depression and I, I have a tendency to feel as if I'm not contributing enough to my household, mm. my relationship with my husband, I, t I have a tendency to take on too much because I, I want to contribute. Mm -hmm. You know, he works very hard every day. I, I want to help him out. Yeah. So I was working on a couple of different um, MLM, you know, the, the multi-level marketing okay. companies uh, selling these products online. Um, I was running a pet sitting business on the side. And, uh, you know, like you had mentioned, I had previously had my mom pass. My brother passed on my birthday, uh, which was very difficult. And it was just building up and building mm -hmm. up and building up. And I am a recovering self-injurer. And self-injury was kind of my go-to coping and, and you mechanism. talk about this in your book. Right. Um, how you injured yourself and, and, and it would feel like a relief, which right. was a vicious cycle, and that's not unusual for people who are cutters. Right. They, it's like they feel emotionally in pain and then they physically feel in pain. It, it's cathartic in mm -hmm. some way. It's like saying, hey, here I am in pain, but then you don't show it to anybody, and it's, so it becomes a vicious cycle because you know, nobody is seeing what you're trying to put out there. Did anybody say snap out of it oh, or yeah. um, think that you were overreacting? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
you know, um, even my mom when she was alive, she had a tendency to be one of those snap out of it ladies, yeah. you know. And sometimes that can work, you know, as a therapist, sometimes when you instruct somebody to, come on, you got to pull yourself together, it can be helpful, you have to know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not. And with bipolar disorder, it's very common, it's a lot more common than we realized in the past because there's a, a range, you know, where people can have it an extremely difficult version of it or um, problematic version and then there's the kind of bipolar light which is <laughs> less pronounced uh, but if you get medicated correctly it certainly can create stability did you find post hospitalization you were able to find that right balance I found what worked for me in a roundabout way because the hospital did not work for me okay when it was a horrible horrible mm. place and when I got sent there um, I played the game to get out, basically. You described it as like Jerry Springer. You have a funny moment in your book mm -hmm. where you say Jerry Springer was playing nonstop in the hospital and then it was like Jerry Springer actually on the in ward. In the same room yeah. with the TV with Jerry Springer. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was absolutely ridiculous. And I, I knew that I had to get out of there because it was going to do me more harm than it was going to do me any good. So. Yeah. I just made sure that I was the model patient and I did everything that you're supposed to do and you know thankfully I got out in uh, three days but mm -hmm. it still was a, a complete nightmare. You now have a podcast and mm -hmm. I think we have um, an image of the podcast right here. Yep. Um, yep. Oh there's a picture <laughs> of your husband. We'll get to that later but you do Voices for Change with your husband, mm -hmm. who you also talk a lot about how Joe is a very instrumental part of your life Absolutely. and healing and how that relationship is really central mm -hmm. to you doing everything that you do in terms of sharing your story right. and you know being motivated to use your story as a platform to help others. Mm -hmm. What do you talk about on Voices for Change? We talk about a whole range of mental health topics mm -hmm. and we do add in things like movies and sports and music, um, but it's most, it, it'll be, say for example, we've had um, Dr. Robin Zazio from Hoarders. Oh, okay. We've had her on the show. We've had I did one show of Hoarders. Yeah. Did, they did. did they you? wanted, yeah. They um, didn't like that I wore high heels and the person I helped wanted to throw me out with the garbage. But other than that, it was a beautiful experience and I really liked it. I thought I cured him, but whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we did, you know, Corey Chalmers from Hoarders and, uh -huh. and things like that. So sometimes. And I'm going to do your show too. You're going to find a yes. time for me. Yep. We're just getting it all together. Absolutely. I can't And wait also, for that. people can also hear past episodes mm -hmm. of your show. Can you tell people how they can find you? And also, they, there's a petition that you are instituting about teaching kids about mental health issues yes. in Starting school, which is so age. important right now with the increase in suicides. Did you know that there's an increase in suicide statistically right now? I think I heard 800,000 per year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the website for the podcast is... Uh, www.voices-for-change.net. Okay, and there are other episodes that people can hear. Mm -hmm. And what I like is that you always have your eye on talking. And I really do think they call therapy the talking cure. And it's really through talking about it and helping to humanize different feelings. And I even think just even teaching about emotions in general would be so helpful because everyone in their life will experience depression and anxiety and maybe it's not to the point where it requires medication but we really need to become emotionally fluent and I think once we are we can have a new conversation that's less right. burdensome. I don't know how you feel what you feel the answer is but mm -hmm. certainly you uh, created 
talking mental health, right? Is that the hashtag? Let keep, me get it right. Keep talk, hashtag keep, keep talking MH. Okay, yeah. keep talking MH. And mm -hmm. I did something for you. I think we have it right there. Yep. <laughs> keep talking MH. It looks like I'm not wearing clothes there, but I promise you, I was, I was, I was. It just, I don't know, I don't know. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, that I was a way a to get. I had a day. You had a day, and we did to... that. And you have a lot yeah. of famous people too that mm -hmm. also are saying keep talking mental yeah. health. And if our audience wants to hashtag, what do you recommend that they do? Because you have a recommendation for keeping this phrase, this has hashtag alive. Right. I, you know, if whenever you speak about mental health on Twitter, just. Keep, hashtag keep talking ment, uh, MH. Yes, <laughs> keep talking <laughs> because MH. Because it's, it's so important and it's really be, it's really blown up. Yeah. It, it, there's, every day I go through um, all of the posts and I like and retweet all of the oh, posts. Oh, that's great. And I'm, you know, an hour later still <laughs> liking and retweeting posts. So. There are so many people that are talking about also um, emotions like even the royal family and Absolutely. Lady Gaga mm -hmm. and um, do you remember way back in the day oh god what's her name Sinead O'Connor mm -hmm. she talks a lot about just her multiple issues and, right. and getting help and um, it's so easy to get the help that people need to get that I just want to make sure that um, you know there are people out there who want to hear your story and are available and so connect with people. Nobody should be a one-man band. We're right. not meant to be a one-man band. We all need other people. We come into this world dependent on a caretaker in order to survive and it doesn't change throughout our life. So one of the things that we do here is something fun. We call it keeping it real. Okay. And we ask some fun questions. Um, Will you play along? Absolutely. Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> what do you feel most proud of? That man over there oh, behind the counter. Should we show him? Because <laughs> nobody talks about their husband the way you do. I mean, Rebecca, you are amazing. Come. This this is Joe. Come, Joe. Come. <laughs> this is Hi. this is her fabulous husband oh, who God. is amazing and drove twelve hours. I'll make it yeah. fifteen hours just to give you super credit. <laughs> and you also co-host on the podcast and are amazing. So oh, thank you. maybe you want to write too, kind of a joint book on how you successfully stay married and enjoy each other and like well, each other. You, you know, honestly, the podcast really got started because people would come to us, you know, because... How are you guys still married? Yeah, it's six, you know, she's, 16 years now for us, so... You know, and she's the afflicted, and I'm the caretaker, and they would, you know, hey, I'm having problems with my husband, I'm having problems with my wife, and we were given advice left and right, and we're like, maybe, maybe we should do a podcast yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. I think it's so, so great, and it's wonderful, and yeah. you inspire other people, because there are many people who don't have you know, an illness or diagnosis that can't figure out how to be happily married. Right. So yeah. period, you should just <laughs> share that with people <laughs> regardless of what the diagnosis is. Okay, who do you most admire in life? Gosh, who do I most admire in life? I think, and this might sound a little bit strange, but one of the people that I really admire is Leah Remini. Oh. I am a huge fan of hers uh -huh. uh, and her coming out about Scientology and okay. all of this work that she's doing to help people that were Scientologists and ah. everything. Uh, I think that that's fabulous that she's, you know, really, really strong and amazing. Uh -huh. so, plus, she's hilarious. So, yeah, I think. Well, that that's great. Crazy. I'm sure she'll love hearing that. <laughs> what does the perfect day look like to you? Sleep. Sleeping? God <laughs> oh, bless her. You know, you're right on trend because having good sleep is like so positive for so many things. And, and, including avoiding Alzheimer's, staying mm -hmm. in a good mood, just staying sharp, losing weight, all those things. Yeah, I spend time with him, and then we, we'll take a And you guys sleep and take, take a nap. Nice nap. Maybe and that's why you guys are so happily married. Maybe that's another thing. Yeah, we're, we're so busy sleeping, we're not talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> all right, tell me three things you remember about kindergarten. Oh, my gosh, this is so embarrassing. I remember one day that I threw up. Uh huh. On the floor in the in the kindergarten room. Okay. I remember that real well. Uh, I I remember. 
gosh, that's tough. Um, well, we could stick with one if that's your most prominent memory. Yes, yeah, that, then that that's enough. unfortunate. Yeah, well, that's my most listen, I remember memory. talking about jewelry with a friend. So <laughs> listen, we all have our memories. Okay, <laughs> tell me the three best things about you. Uh, I think I have a pretty good sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I have a quick wit. And I think I'm a pretty good writer. Yeah, you're a great writer. <laughs> I really you. love this. So. Thank you so much for doing what you do, for coming here, for being special people. Um, I, I, I'm going to have the website up for Rebecca Lombardo, so please check out her website, check out her book. It's like a personal diary giving you insight into what her experience is and, and the challenges that she overcame to inspire everybody else. Check out her podcast, Voices for Change, and um, hopefully she'll come back and and Absolutely. tell us all the new and exciting things and perhaps new books and new programs, whatever it is. We, we invite you back anytime. Thank and thank you, you so, so much for joining us. And thank you for joining me on Talking Live. We will see you next week. Always appreciating having you with us and sharing your time with us.